a second time and I call the member for Fisher. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I've got one, well, I've got a couple of problems with this bill, but one is uh, so much to say, such little time. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, as you have probably heard me speak in this place uh, many times, uh, I'm an ex-chippy, uh, an ex-carpenter and joiner, uh, proudly an ex-carpenter and joiner. Uh, still hold my builder's licence, uh, although I have to say after the last six years I've been getting a little bit soft. But, um, the housing and construction sector is incredibly important to me. Uh, provide greater certainty to many Australians who are uh, who are, are pensioners, and um, it is a, a, a bill which follows on from the fantastic work that the coalition government has been doing in relation to the provision of housing uh, over the last six years. And, um, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'll, I'll foreshadow that I, I am so passionate about this, uh, this area, I may even ask for an extension of time uh, for my speech. Uh, th this, is, uh, this, is a spe this is a bill uh, the Social Security Act and the Veterans Entitlement Act, um, which supports pensioners and indeed other eligible uh, uh, income support recipients during the sale of the purchase of a home. Uh, of a, uh, now, basically what it will do is it will extend the existing assets test exemption for a principal place of residence um, it, to uh, the person which Sorry, it'll uh, extend the existing assets test exemption for principal place of residence which a person intends to use to purchase a new principal home from 12 to 24 months. Um, it'll also apply only the lower below threshold deeming rate to these asset test exempt principal home sale proceeds when calculating the deemed income. Now, why is that important? Well, Mr Deputy Speaker, um, we are going through a the former assistant treasurer, um, and he has done absolutely outstanding work. He has provided an, an opportunity, a legislative opportunity, for um, thousands of Australians who would otherwise not been a, have been able to buy a home through such programs as uh, Home Builder, uh, the Home Saver Super Scheme, uh, and also schemes that we know people who, uh, particularly say um, single parents, uh, who just haven't been able to be able to save a deposit, have been able to get it out of the rent race with as little as you know, a 2% deposit, in some cases 5% deposit. We know that, uh, that one of the greatest impediments to home ownership in this country is their, people's ability to be able to uh, save enough money for a deposit. Uh, you know, in the, the heady days of not so long ago, uh, where we saw ever-increasing house prices, um, people just simply couldn't afford to save uh, enough deposit and keep up with those savings to be able to buy, save a deposit to, to buy a home. And so uh, to his credit, to the coalition government's credit, but particularly to the assistant treasurer's credit, uh, these various schemes were devised to um, get people uh, out of the rent race and into homes. And th that's what this coalition is all about going back to uh, Menzies' days. Unashamedly, we are pro-home uh, ownership. Home ownership is not just uh, an asset. It's not just something you can buy and sell. But more importantly, home ownership gives you security. It gives you comfort. It gives you a roof over your head. It's more than just one of the uh, 
you know, the, the principal requirements or human needs of food, water and, and uh, a roof over your head, it provides a home to Australians. And um, I'm a big believer in home ownership. That probably won't come as any great surprise to you as, a, as an ex-builder because it provides that security to families. And one of the best things that this bill will provide is an incentive to people whose lives have, have changed uh, because the, the kids have left the home. And uh, I've been in that, in that situation, Mr Deputy Speaker. We've, we've got four daughters, three of whom have departed the, the nest. Uh, you know, we once had a five bedroom home and, and uh, we no longer have that size, that, that size home. And we, you know, families do decrease the size of the home as the circumstances change. But, Mr Deputy Speaker, I do have a very, very significant problem. I have a very, very significant problem with uh, the explanatory memoranda of this bill, which talks about uh, this bill being able to assist older Australians who are said to be 55 and older. Now, I'm not quite there yet. I'm 54, but uh, uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a lot older. I'm only 54. I'm a spring chicken. Um, but uh, in all seriousness, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I, and I say that with jest. Um, I do say that with jest. This bill will, and we support it for this reason. It will provide an incentive for uh, older Australians to be able to downsize their home. Uh, move into a smaller home, perhaps, uh, and free up those larger family homes for families. Now, we know, despite the great work that the former Assistant Treasurer has done over the last six years, with all of the programs and all of the incentives that we've provided, there is still a massive shortfall in housing in this country. And it doesn't matter where you go, And it is very clear that that is the case because of the amount of people, uh, you know, our, in my home state in Queensland, particularly around uh, the Sunshine Coast, we've got a vacancy rate somewhere around about 0.2 per cent. We've got people who uh, are working, have good jobs, but they simply can't rent a house. They just can't find a house. They can't find a house, particularly for families. So this bill will not only assist and provide a greater degree of certainty to older Australians, people over age 55 apparently, you'd be right. Just make it. Just make it. Um, but it will provide much needed opportunities for younger Australians to be able, it will free up to some extent, it will it'll help uh, add the supply of family homes to the market, um, which is a good thing. It's a very, very good thing. Uh, you know, I've spoken about what's happening on the Sunshine Coast at the moment, and it is dire. And that's despite uh, this government doing things like providing some two point its obligation, I'm sorry, this opposition, when we're in government, um, uh, not only takes its obligations to, uh, to uh, uh, homeowners uh, uh, very seriously, but it also takes its obligations to those people who are less well off. Um, those people who can't afford to own their own home at this point in time, they, they may not be able to afford a private rental. But, so this coalition, when we were in government, provided some $2.1 billion to community housing providers to build or refinance their existing loans to help people um, get into a rental home that's a subsidised rental home. And I've, I did an inquiry in relation to this in the last parliament. And community housing providers 
provide a sensational service to the Australian people. Far better, in my view, than traditional state public housing. State public housing uh, has a very, very long list. In But when you finally get that house in public housing, you get a roof over your head. Community housing providers provide so much more. Community housing providers effectively want to put themselves out of a job. Community housing providers like um, uh, um, I'll come back to it in a minute. Uh, I, my mind's gone blank, but, but community housing providers um, look at not just providing a roof over your head, but they, they want to look at why you are in need of assistance in the first place. How can they help you get out of community housing and into private rental, for example, and maybe even into home ownership? Now, that is far and away better than what uh, public housing under states and territories provide. To be able to assist a family to get out of uh, uh, some form of uh, community um, is a very, very worthy and, uh, and, and needy objective. And uh, this government is, work I'm sorry, this opposition, when we were in government, we're working uh, hand in glove with the community housing sector. But more than that, um, when we were in government, we were providing over $4 billion a year in, uh, in um, Commonwealth rent assistance. If you know, the, those members opposite pilloried us, pilloried the coalition when we were in government about not doing enough to help people uh, in, their, in their time of need in relation to housing. We were spending billions of dollars in helping people uh, with their, their, their rent. Now, the whole concept of Commonwealth rent assistance was that the Commonwealth would provide approximately 30 per cent uh, of the, the cost of housing, the cost of rental. Now, uh, as we've seen in the last couple of years, rents have gone through the roof and that 30 per cent figure is probably inaccurate now. But um, it is absolutely false to say that when we were in government that the coalition was not pulling its weight in relation to housing. Uh, so, look, Mr Deputy Speaker, um, this bill is, a, is a, a very, very important part to provide certainty and security to people who are, are, are pensioners, um, veterans, to be able to uh, provide that greater degree of certainty, to give them a longer period of time, uh, from 12 months to 24 months. And it really does build on the great work that the, uh, that the previous coalition government provided. Now, the measure will see around 890,000 Australians have greater certainty in their fortnightly social security payments. This would benefit 450,000 aged pensioners and 440,000 other payment recipients with financial assets who are affected by deeming rates. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, the coalition, uh, as I've indicated previously, worked assiduously in assisting people with housing. I've talked about the end user, but what I haven't talked about is the construction sector itself. And uh, the construction sector is worth around about 8 per cent of GDP in this country. It employs over a million Australians. And uh, around about uh, June of 2020, the construction sector faced an economic cliff and a lot of my uh, friends and colleagues in the building industry were saying just how dire things were becoming in the industry. But
coalition, when we were in government, continued to work with the construction sector. We provided uh, jobs and security to the people in need as a result of COVID. Um, and that's just an additional Order. benefit to the work that we've done uh, in relation to um, providing home and home ownership. And uh, I support this bill with great gusto. Order. <laughs>